Hello and welcome. This is Deep Dive and I'm Tiffany Meyer. It seems this year's election has been in the news a lot lately, so let's delve into what's happening in Pennsylvania. After the state Senate hearing on the 24th, both the House and Senate Republicans introduced resolutions to withdraw and vacate the certification of presidential electors and disapproves of the infringement of the General Assembly's sole authority pursuant to the United States Constitution to regulate the sanction of electoral college delegates. In addition, Pennsylvania Court Judge Patricia McCullough, who has moved to halt the current process of certifying Pennsylvania's election results, dedicated a 13-page memorandum on the 27th, detailing her judicial reasons for such a decision. Unfortunately, however, her decision was overturned by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court on the grounds that the petitioners had failed to file their challenge in a timely manner. Before getting into the main topic, let's briefly summarize some other recent developments. First, the successful state legislative hearings in Pennsylvania are likely to be repeated in Arizona and Michigan. Last Friday, there was a different outcome. The Federal Third Circuit, which oversees Pennsylvania, dismissed a case appealed by the Trump team. But after the dismissal, Giuliani made clear in a press statement that this is not necessarily a bad thing. The two main directions in which the Trump team are now working are the Supreme Court and the state legislatures. Specifically, Giuliani said that his team is going to push the very strong cases to the Supreme Court. And so far, they've had four or five such cases. And the Pennsylvania case is one of them. So the Third Circuit Court's decision accelerates the step toward the Supreme Court. He said that at the state level, it's very, very important to push state legislators to refuse to certify election results. On the Pennsylvania State Legislature, on the 27th, Pennsylvania Republican legislatures filed resolutions in both chambers. The resolutions are very similar in content, and the main ideas are as follows. First, there are indications that the presidential election was fraudulent on a large scale, and it was clearly unconstitutional. For this reason, they are asking the Pennsylvania state government to stop the certification of the election results. A very important point is that the legislature is asserting its constitutional right to appoint electors, which is not something the governor can just decide. The Constitution requires the state legislature to determine the final presidential electors for the entire state. But in Pennsylvania, it works like this. Each party's nominee chooses their electoral college electors, and the winning candidate's party submits its list to the governor to be certified. The electors will cast their votes for president on December 14th in Harrisburg, and that result will then be sent to Congress by December 23rd. Congress is scheduled to meet in a joint session on January 6th to count the electoral votes. This time, the Pennsylvania legislature wants to reclaim their constitutional power to determine the presidential electors away from the governor. If the secret weapon hidden in the Constitution can be used successfully, the state Senate and House of Representatives could decide the final list of Pennsylvania's presidential electors. In the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, the Republican Party has 113 members. The Democrats have 90. In the Senate, the Republican Party has 28 members. And there is an independent who usually votes with the Republicans. There are 21 Democratic members. If all Republicans have agreement, there will be no issue on passing the resolutions. However, the problem is that there is currently disagreement within the Pennsylvania Republican Party. It is clear from all indications that the ability of the Pennsylvania Republican Party to reach an agreement in the next few days will be the key to the final passage of these two resolutions in both chambers of Pennsylvania. In addition, the resolutions of the state legislature have other significance, which is it can help President Trump's legal cases get accepted in the Supreme Court. We know that after the lower courts have rejected the cases, these cases will go up to the Supreme Court. For example, after the Third Circuit rejected the Trump team's case, the team will appeal to the Supreme Court. But the key is whether the Supreme Court will accept the case or not. The support from state legislatures could be helpful for the Supreme Court to take up the case. If the Pennsylvania legislature does pass these two resolutions this time, Pennsylvania's electoral votes will be decided by the legislature, which is Republican-dominated. If that is the case, the Biden team is likely to begin a legal process.
Then the Supreme Court would face cases from both President Trump's team and Biden's team. It would be very unlikely the Supreme Court can reject these two cases because of their significance. When you look back at American history, it is hard to find another state that has played a more important role in the history of the United States than Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is the birthplace of the United States as a nation. On June 11, 1776, the Continental Congress in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, appointed a committee to draft the Declaration of Independence. This committee included five founding fathers of the United States, including Thomas Jefferson, Roger Sherman, Benjamin Franklin, Robert Livingston, and John Adams. After their discussions, Jefferson drafted the Declaration of Independence. It was then revised and adopted by the Congress on July 4th, which is now our Independence Day. On July 8th, Colonel John Nixon publicly read the Declaration of Independence for the first time from the steps of Independence Hall, Philadelphia, and the Independence Bell was rung, establishing the United States as a great nation. Pennsylvania is the birthplace of the American Republic, and it also played a big role in preserving the American Republic. Soon after the founding of the United States, the United States entered into a civil war. As can be imagined, if the United States had really split into North and South, and even some parts of the West had become a third country, then the divided nation of North America would not have been such a powerful force for the next 200 years. The battle that truly preserved the Republic, the Battle of Gettysburg, took place in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It was 1863. And after two years of defeating the North in numerous battles, Southern General Robert E. Lee realized that the current reality of North and South fighting each other could not continue. And he needed a quick solution. He brought his troops from the South directly into the North and was prepared to deal a heavy blow in important Northern cities, such as Harrisburg, Philadelphia, and Baltimore. If he succeeded, the North would be forced to sign an alliance to recognize the existence of the South as an independent nation. But after entering the North, they met the main Northern forces at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It was at this place that a brutal battle took place, resulting in more than 23,000 Northern casualties and 28,000 Southern casualties, including more than 3,100 Northern deaths and 3,900 Southern deaths. In terms of casualties, the North and South were almost the same. But because the Southern states were agricultural states, their human and financial resources were not as strong as the North's. The South's casualties were a fundamental blow to its military power, which made it impossible for the South to attack the North directly from then on. The war was fought almost exclusively in the South for the next two years until the North defeated the South completely, preserving the Republic's existence. Therefore, in the history of the American Republic, Gettysburg was a major turning point. That battle was fought in July. In November, four months later, Lincoln came to Gettysburg to give his famous speech. In this speech, he said, We here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. But as we know, democracy itself does not last forever, because people's morality would deteriorate, and that would result in the death of democracy. That's why, at different times, people with a strong sense of justice and responsibility need to stand up to uphold democracy and the system of law and order so that it can really never die. Throughout this process in Pennsylvania, we've seen some admirable voices, including Judge Patricia McCullough of Pennsylvania's Commonwealth Court and also the state senator Doug Mastriano. He is the pushing force behind the Pennsylvanian Senate hearing on the election and the two resolutions that followed. Senator Mastriano is a 56-year-old retired Army colonel. He is the state senator from Pennsylvania's 33rd district, where Gettysburg is located. He began his military service in 1986, first in Germany, where he witnessed the collapse of the Soviet Union. Then in the U.S., Army's Operation Desert Storm in Iraq, 
where he was directly involved in the fight against Saddam's elite Republican Guard. Later, he served four years with NATO and deployed three times to Afghanistan, where he was the director of NATO's Joint Intelligence Center in Afghanistan. Prior to his retirement, he was a professor in the U.S. Army War College in Pennsylvania. His strong sense of patriotism and deep knowledge of American history have made him an invaluable figure in this important part of history. He gave an important speech after the Pennsylvania hearing on the 24th. He said, as history and change in 1863 in Gettysburg, back then in July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, so on this day, history is changing for our country and state back at Gettysburg once again. I hope that his prediction is correct. I hope that democracy and the rule of law in America will undergo this test. Thank you so much for joining me today on Deep Dive. See you again soon. I'm Tiffany Meyer.